where it gets a little bit different from perhaps other platforms, because again, I mentioned we're fully skills based. So you're looking at skills in your organization. We have a lot of metrics on skills and how they're performing. And this is why I think is, especially with skills being so important in L&D at the moment and, and upskilling and reskilling people within businesses. I think this is great to identify skill trends and to sort of identify skills that you have and you may not have realized you had or skills that are actually not being delivered as well as you think and not being upskilled in the right way. So again, high level skills here, abundant skills in your organization. These are the top 10 skills of people in your org who have achieved it and also on the right who are working towards that skill. So you can look at straight away. I know that learning management systems is a high skill in, in our business in this test product, but the learning design, actually people are looking towards learning design. And you could look at this and say, well, that's great. Well, let's dig into learning design a bit more and say, actually, you know, how much content do we have for learning design? How many, what are the people who are working towards that? You know, are we, are we supplying the learning that encourages you from moving from working towards that skill to actually achieving that skill? But I also think it's a great example. Again, you might realize that actually um, there's, a, there's a problem in your business maybe because people are seeking team motivation that might suggest something else. You might be looking into certain skills here might be really specific to a product or service you sell and you may be able to, to adapt in that way. So digging down a little bit further, um, we're now sort of talking different charts here. We've got some really nice things. The balance between achievement and, and the progression of the skills. So uh, is it something you're working towards versus you've achieved? You can start to see how that sits. Again, depending on your objectives of the organization, you might want to see more people working towards a higher number than achieved, or you might want to see people achieving more skills effectively. So just to track that over time, gives you that nice balance. And we have some nice averages that you can work with. So you know that the average number of skills a person is working towards, you can utilize that as you wish. You can see that actually a new starter, you might want to say, hey, you probably want to select three, three skills here, three that you're working towards and three that you think you've achieved because that tends to be the norm. And, you can start to analyze that as well and progress that over time. But we're getting some really nice bits here around, we have skills in the platform that we're creating content for, we're curating, surfacing, even purchasing content for the skills of whatever that might be, resilience. And actually, these have got the fewest amount of people working towards them or achieve them. You know, these are the skills that are the least required in my business at the moment. So again, you can, you can use that information and effectively make larger, wider business decisions about where you spend your capital. Going down a little bit, we're still talking about overview, but we can see people who are working towards the most skills. Christos Potos is, is working with an average of eight. Uh, people who have achieved the most skill. Michael Bright uh, has, uh, has achieved the most skills. And again, high level, but great information to sort of see how your teams are progressing. Now we have a underserved skills calculation, which is based around the number of people that are actually looking, uh, who are demanding that skill, either working towards it or achieved, but also how many content items have we got and effectively, we're looking at a number here where the number of people is quite high uh, relative to your organization, of course, but the number of content items is quite low. So you can see learning design has got four people interested out of the seven, which is over half of the business. But the number of content items we have for learning design is just 10. So people have wanted to learn that skill, but ultimately we're not providing a way for them to upskill in that way. Again, a great high level overview of, for your L&D team, what you could be focusing on, what content you could be curating or getting together in the next in the next quarter to help your teams. Moving through a little bit more. Um, oh, so what I will do actually, I'll show you here. So this is um, underserved skills. Again, we can expand this, but on the bottom on the, uh, the the button on the right as well of the item. This is where you can export to CSV, uh, CSV or export to Excel, and that's going to give you that data set downloaded as CSV. I'll, I'll not do it here now, but you can get that out. Any bit of data in this platform in here, you can export. Skills with the least content, the skills with the most content, that's the last level of um, high level metric that we give you on skills. And this again is not necessarily matching things like the demand of the skill. This is just a simple metric of what skills have you not got content for and what skills have actually got lots of content. And again, you've got to try to probably start to map that against demand, but you might decide actually, you know, innovation is probably we shouldn't be spending money on trying to create more content for that at this point because we've got quite a lot in there, but actually we might want to shift that to persuasive communication or something along those lines. And you can start to, to dig into this, these metrics as they suit your business. So there's a lot of high level overview of skills. And don't forget here, we're still on high level organization anal analytics. And we're not switched on skills, people or content as of yet. And that's where you can really dig in. So you're getting the flavor and a feel for, for how much of uh, how much data we track and store and how many reports and um, slicing and dicing you can do with that. 